Take your seats and we'll get started here. Welcome. Uh, we're grateful that you came on this beautiful day outside. Uh, chilly, so uh, make yourself warm there and, and prepare to hear some beautiful worship music. For those of you who may not know me, I'm Pastor Jim Pyle. Uh, I'm the senior adults pastor here at Calvary, and it's a joy for us to bring these uh, organ concerts to you once a month. And as always, we're privileged to have our regular organist, Elizabeth Hildebrand, with us today to play for us. And also, we can wel welcome a, a partner of hers, uh, Nancy Tassiri, is here with us, and she'll be playing on the piano. Nancy's back here, so she'll come up in a few moments. So let me open with a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. It's new every morning, and what a joy it is to come to Calvary Church this morning to sit and listen to such beautiful hymns and music, that we can sit here and contemplate our relationship with you as we focus on you. May you be glorified this hour. Thank you for Elizabeth and Nancy and their willingness to share their gifts with us this morning. And may our hearts be full of joy because you're our great God and you sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be the propitiation for our sins. What a great high priest we have in him. So just bless our time together. May our hearts be filled with joy and admiration for you. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's welcome Elizabeth, shall we? <clears throat>
Beautiful, isn't it? Well, the main way that things can be well with our soul is to pursue godliness. And I want to take a few minutes this morning and share some thoughts with you from God's Word about doing that. Because godliness should be our desire and our goal from the moment of conversion to the moment we're promoted to heaven. We should be pursuing godliness. And all the while, worldliness is uh, tugging at our heels and the temptations that are out there. But no matter what our age, we are to pursue godliness and avoid worldliness. The Olympics are coming up here, I think, starting next week, like an athlete that's training for the Olympics. In the spiritual realm, in our Christian lives, we're to pursue godliness. So if you'd like to take your Bibles there in the pews, if you want to follow along with me, turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. I want to share a few thoughts with you this morning about disciplining the thoughts of our mind. One of the ways that we can pursue godliness is to discipline the thoughts of our mind. And Peter speaks to this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. So I invite you to take the pew Bible there and turn there, and I'll read it to you and then share a few thoughts with you by way of devotion time here this morning. Peter writes, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. So let's ask ourselves a question. What is one way to discipline our lives in pursuing holiness? Well, it starts with our heart and our mind, our inner man, to discipline our thoughts and our mind. Peter tells us here, notice in that first phrase, to be prepared. What he means by that is the word of God should so fill our minds and govern the way we think so that our lifestyles are pleasing to the Lord. Always prepare your minds for what? For action. That we should so fill our minds with God's word daily 
as we intake physical food, that we intake spiritual food daily to be prepared for action. Secondly, notice he says there, be sober-minded. What does he mean by this? Be alert. As a Christian, we're called to be alert, under self-control, have a clarity of mind, to be clear. This includes a mental alertness that prepares us to endure difficulties for the sake of the gospel. Paul said that to Timothy, for example, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, be sober-minded, endure suffering, fulfill your ministry. The past two years with COVID around and so forth, it's, it's been a challenge. It's been trying on all of us. But Peter's calling us here, be mentally alert so that we can endure the difficulties that may come into our life, spiritual trials, physical trials. We should continue to grow in holiness and be ready for Jesus' return. That's what he's talking about here. Be sober-minded. Be spiritually alert. One of the ways that we can do that, of course, is our prayer life. To be praying daily. One of the ministries that we have here is called Watchman Prayer, where we ask our congregants to sign up and pray throughout the week for the, the ministries of the church. To be in prayer daily. To pray without ceasing. To be spiritually alert in that. And then also, he reminds us here by being alert, spiritually alert, to recognize that we have an enemy who's crafty and deceitful. Satan prowls around like what? A roaring lion, right? That Peter describes later in chapter 5. So we have to be alert. Then notice the next phrase there. We are to be hopeful. Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Set your hope fully on God's grace. What does that mean? What does hope mean biblically? That we have a confident expectation for the future. Why? Because God's promises are true. Everything that he says, we can be confident in. And that's what hope means biblically. And we're to set our minds on that, the grace that will be brought to us at the revelation of Christ. Martin Luther King once had a very good quote. He said this, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Our God is infinite. We can trust him, and we're to set our minds on that and hope fully on his grace, that infinite hope that God has. So we need to renew our minds as God's people, helping us to wash out any worldly thinking that we have. And how do we do that? Through the word of God to set our minds and our thinking and fill our minds on God's word each and every day to pursue godliness. That's how we avoid worldly thinking, to set our minds on these things, to prepare our minds for action, to be sober-minded, and to set our hope fully on the grace of God. And that's what he wants us to do. If you're in Christ, he wants us to be set apart daily that's what theologians call progressive sanctification, to become more like Jesus. And hopefully, in our older years, that we are more like Christ until he calls us home, but yet to continue to be an ambassador for him. Now, one more verse I'd like to give you that uh, I would encourage you not only to memorize this passage, but also Philippians 4.8. Paul there writes, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, what? Think about these things. To discipline our minds, to think on godly thoughts not worldly thoughts. So we must discipline our minds to ensure we don't welcome any evil thoughts as believers into our minds. Dwell on these things, what is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable. Think on these things so that we are discerning Christians and pursue godliness, not worldliness. And that leads to training our mouths, training our time, and uh, those kinds of things as well. So I just wanted to take a few moments this morning to challenge us to pursue godliness and avoid worldliness. And that way, as the ladies just played for us, 
it will be well with our souls. No matter what trials of life, the storms of life present to us, let's keep disciplining our hearts and minds in the word of God based on what Peter says here to prepare our minds for action and to set our hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So hopefully at the end of our lives, whatever days God has remaining for us, that when we get to heaven, hopefully he'll say of us, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Okay, so keep those thoughts in mind as the ladies come up now to uh, finish the concert for us. I'll invite them uh, back up wherever they are. There they come. So ladies, come on back up and just focus on these things so that it is indeed well with our souls as well.
Wow, if that doesn't bring a few tears to your eyes, I don't know what will, right? Wow, so powerful. Thank you, ladies. Um, aren't, aren't we grateful as believers that we live in a country where people have been willing like that, as we saw all displayed there, to give their lives for the freedoms that we enjoy? We're so privileged and so grateful. But more than that, I couldn't help but think, as the ladies played the battle hymn of the Republic there, to think that we worship a God living in the midst of this sin-cursed world who's still in control of everything. And that's the great hope we have as Christians and all the more reason why we need to get the message of the gospel to such a needy world where people have given their lives in battles, men fighting men and so forth. But I couldn't help but think of Isaiah Chapter 46, verses 8 through 10. Remember this and stand firm. Recall this to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. What great we hope we have as Christians that we worship an almighty God who indeed is in control and will accomplish all his good purposes. And we as Christians have the privilege to share that good news with other people, that Christ came and died for our sins and that we can place our faith and trust in him. And I hope that's the hope that you have in your heart. But if you're here today and you haven't bowed your knee to Jesus by faith alone, I'll remain afterwards for a few minutes. If anybody wants to talk to me or pray with you, feel free to come down front. So let's take a moment to uh, thank the ladies again. Nancy, Elizabeth, thank you. It's absolutely magnificent and beautiful. My heart wells up with joy each time I I hear the ladies play such beautiful music and think about our great God. Uh, if you're visiting with us today, we have some information on the back of the bulletin there about our church. Our regular church worship services are at 945, uh, services at 945 on Sunday mornings. We would invite you to come and uh, avail yourselves of an adult life group, weekly Bible studies. Uh, our next concert, I believe, is scheduled for the end of February, February 27th, I think, so uh, spread the word, continue to pray for our assisted care facility friends who are still not, most of them not able to come because of COVID. So continue to pray for those dear people as well to come back and join us just as soon as possible. So again, thank you for coming. Uh, it's been a beautiful morning of worshiping our great God through music. Let me close in prayer and be safe going home, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Wow. What a joy it is to just sit and contemplate the, your magnificence through the beauty of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, moving forward as Christians, to always be preparing our minds for action, to be sober-minded, and yet to set our hope fully on your grace that will be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So may we go from here, our hearts filled with beautiful music and hope in you and help us to be ambassadors for Christ, proclaim his glories to such a needy world. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ himself and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And everyone said, amen. God bless you. Be careful.